Hey everybody, welcome to 3D6 Down the Line. My name is John, I am the referee for the game, and you're probably wondering why you're just hearing me and seeing just me on the screen. It's because I screwed up the auto recording of last night's episode. Uh, I was not recording audio all the way up until the point where we took our first pee break, which thankfully was relatively early in the episode. So when we picked up from the pee break, the audio was fine. And that's where you're going to see the audio, the uh, video actually start for this episode. I apologize for that. So I'm here to just give you a really quick, quick overview of what exactly occurred up until the point we took our pee break. So uh, we start again in the end of the broken head. It is nighttime on the 4th of Ligarios. They had not yet bedded down because the plan was that they were thinking about investigating the basement below the inn uh, to see if there perhaps was another entrance to the dungeon or maybe some uh, some sort of secret that Kronos and Estelle were keeping down below. Um, they decided not to do that. They decided not to investigate because we did not have David for this episode. It was pretty much David's idea and uh, it, the plan all hinged on David's use of a particular illusionist spell to cover their tracks. Um, while they did this investigation. So they decided to save that for another day, whenever onward the illusionist could be with the party, and they decide to bed down for the night and go straight back into the dungeon. So they do so. They uh, The next day, it, the 5th of Ligarios, it is pouring rain. They head back to the Pyramid of Thoth. They go back down and to the Debouchement, uh, into that uh, large square area where the statue of Thoth is hidden in the darkness in the middle, and they usually have to pay their fee to the halflings of Phlebotomist Plumthorns gang. Um, when they get down there, they hear the halflings beyond the portcullis back in their quarters actually torturing and interrogating a goblin about the whereabouts of a missing halfling known as Carloman Fleetfingers. Um, the goblin they hear beyond the portcullis is attempting to give up any information that he might have. He doesn't know who the halfling is, according to him, but he feels that if the goblins do have Carlem and Fleet Fingers, who's probably a prisoner of the king and is being interrogated by the king's chief interrogator. So deciding that they can't get any information out of the goblin, the PCs actually hear the halflings force some horrible thing down the goblin's throat. The goblin comes, uh, is thrown out through the portcullis into the area where the PCs are listening to this, has a gigantic awful boobo that has grown around his neck and blood is coming out of his mouth and he drops dead on the ground. It looks like he was obviously poisoned with something horrible. Uh, the halflings come out very pleased with themselves after getting this information and killing their goblin prisoner, um, feeling not, no guilt at all under the PC's questioning about what just occurred um, and demand their payment, their tithe for um, the, allowing the PCs to adventure. The PCs do so. And this is basically the point where we decided to take a break and it pits back up from there. Um, so you're going to see that uh, when we pick up the episode, it basically starts in media res with them discussing what to do around the goblin's body. And, um, and that's it. So basically, I, I hope you enjoy the rest of the episode. I really apologize for not being able to show you the, the beginning part, but uh, I hope you enjoy it. And we will see you next time. Bye. Okay, and we're back, and bladders are empty. Kids are tucked away. Uh, oh. We're good to go. Um, Refill it promptly. Uh, I wanted to say that, uh, so since the moment you stepped in here, had the conversation with, um, you saw the goblin, blah, 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 the conversation, and take the take, take, yeah, yeah. Uh, experiment with the statue, I'm going to say three turns have gone by. Mm -hmm. Okay. It is 9.30 right. right now. Michael. Guys, I just, I just want to... I find it hard to believe that like a dozen people haven't already played with this statue. I don't want us to go down the rabbit hole and play with this thing for the entire game session. We'll go blind. Yeah. <laughs> and then you're blind, you can't attack. So <laughs> that's right. So okay. Right. No, I, hear you. I have the Let's... same thought. I kind of thought, you know, you never know. Maybe people are observant and dumb or whatever, but if there was some obvious thing, I do want to just say. We haven't checked the rest of the pedestal or the statue mm -hmm. as we've with these arms. I'm okay doing that. I just, I'm, I am going to... All right, so do you leave this the, Right now the arms are up. Where do you put them? Well, while they're up, I want to go just walk around the rest of the pedestal and look for, like, tapping on things and prying mm -hmm. at panels and see if there's anything sure. else that pops Being up. Being very careful, so taking another turn, but you are confident in saying that you do not see anything else. I'd say uh, put the, them back the, down. The only other thing before we change the statue, I just want to peek at the statue that's down the hall just to see if there's any kind of 
Like if we do something to this one, does it do the same thing? Gotcha. Yep. Yeah. Uh, yeah. you, you did not see anything. Yeah, and we didn't see any like portcullis open or doors. No. We didn't hear any doors clicking or new doors no. appear. I, as I said, the only thing you heard locking into place was just the arms themselves. Okay. Right. Like nothing is is uh, you know at least something. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I mean, yeah. it's a pretty low bar, but the, okay. Yeah. Uh, you oh, know what? I, uh, I take it back, Squeegee. Uh, when you yeah. are very careful and you're looking at the base of the pedestal where it meets yeah. the actual floor, okay, yeah, you do see that it looks as if the pedestal. Um, how do I put this? It's like uh, it's not set perfectly into that stone, right? Oh, so maybe it could move, maybe? Possibly. Like, there is, like, the finest of seams around the entire perimeter of the pedestal. Now, that seam, meaning that the pedestal's sitting on the floor and there's a gap, or it could do something like this? Uh, the, the former. So maybe, like, give it a little push? It doesn't move. Rotate? No. Okay. I wonder if the arms are actually, you put something in the... I think you, I think you put chest, something in the chest. You ratchet, it, and that, that, that when you open it up, it, the offering is gone. But... It's like the, uh, the penny and the little bank, right? You exactly. put the penny in, <laughs> and, the thing, and the penny's let's gone. Put the, the penny is gone. Let's put the goblet in there and see if he disappears. <laughs> is the chest big enough for that? No. Okay. Yeah, what's, what's right, the size, let's... size of the stone chest? I'm just curious. Uh... It's relatively, it's like normal chest size, right? Like, what is that? I don't know. Three by two. Like a coffer chest or a footlocker chest? Like a footlocker like a... chest. Oh, I could fit in that. I'm a little guy. But I don't want it, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah, let's put the arms Mort? down. What about Mort? Mort? Does he want to go in there? Mort doesn't want to go in there. I don't pay more than enough for that. <laughs> All right, let's... Um... Do we want to go? Do we want to go uh, west and check out the thing that we think we found? Or do we want to go north and... He, uh, who was moaning? Moan. I kind of feel like let's go check out the secret door. Well, okay. well you're the, you're the deciding vote then, Matt. Oh, well, we're right here. The door's right over there. Let's go check it out. Okay, we're all gonna die, but that's cool. Okay, heading west uh, down the corridor. You remember uh, the memories of giant rats and scur and scurrying normal rats come uh, come towards you in the niches um, that lined this. You know, kind of looping area here, uh, but you're confronted once again by the other statue. Um, so this is it's sitting on a um, eight foot diameter circular pedestal uh, that mostly blocks the entire intersection. Uh, now this one depicts Ibis um, as we said before. Uh, he is seated this time, um, uh, and he's in his form as known as like Thoth the Recorder. Uh, so he has on his lap, there is a book. The left hand holds the book down, while the right hand holds a quill pen. Um, once again, the main block is onyx. The gibbous head is ivory, as is the book in the quill. So the book and the quill in the, you know, on the lap and in the hand of, or strike out, you know, like they're very noticeable uh, uh, against the onyx. Um, the head has no gemstones in it, merely empty holes once again. Um, Evaricios had intimated the last time that this might be because there's missing gems from the eyes you don't know but in his guise as the um, Thoth recorder it's thought to be purposely designed to show the unfathomable and limitless nature of knowledge alright so I had found a button or something right Like because uh, I was looking at the mural on the wall if I recall uh, I for the, the... For the secret door? Yeah. Behind him, I think, or next underneath him. Yeah, or so maybe. there was a there are frescoes. Uh um, fresco, yeah. Uh let's see. Yeah. Recording uh, yeah, it's Thoth recording the virtues and sins of believers. And most he appears as a scribe, while around him are numerous humans and demi humans shouting requests for mercy and favor. On the western door on the western side um, of the statue. You found one uh, that is a nostril um, uh, of Thoth, basically, like there was a catch there. 
and a door um, slides away into the southern wall. All right, let's let's do it. Um, Avernusius has a torch. He should go first. Uh, wait, did did we open it already? Did you pick Thoth's nose? They can. Well, he just said the door slid open, so I guess oh, we okay. just opened it. Okay. 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 Um, yeah, sure. I take I take my I take my dark torch. Oh, then... actually, before you do that, huh? you said that, that Thoth is holding a scroll, a book, and a, a yeah, book and a quill. He, yeah, he has a book on his he has a book on his left lap, and his left hand is uh, his, his book on his lap. Left hand is holding it down. His right hand is holding a quill. Is is the book open, and does it say anything? Uh, does not no. Okay, but you also said they were made out of ivory. Yes. Can we take them out of his hands? Do you attempt to do that? Uh, I want to see. I want to give him a little wiggle first. <laughs> uh, poke, poke. No, they seem to be of a piece. Like they've been, you know, these appears to be very, very solid. And both well, are, are, are both arms. Are cameras, we could get it out. Are both arms down? Because like, so, so he's holding the book down on his lap. Where's the quill in relation? Is his quill also? They're both down like there? they're both basically. So he's so he's seated. So be aware of that, right? But his his arms are basically at. So this one actually has pinions like um at the elbows and the uh, shoulders as oh. well. So like the earlier one was just sort of like, you know, just like the whole arms would move. This one you could you can move the elbows as well. It's like a GI Joe figure versus a He-Man action figure, right? Does it does <laughs> it look like you could move the quill over to the book? Uh that way? Does not appear to be that way. Not not based upon the seams. It looks like the arms just simply move up and down. down. But anyways, wonder... um, they're both sort of like at waist level. Like one is gently resting on the book. One is sort of like got the quill in the, like got the quill in the hand. You know what I mean? I wonder if these things are meant to be manipulated from below or behind a wall somewhere, like so that the priests can fool the credulous kind of thing. Mm. You know what I mean? Like the statue comes alive. Oh. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like so, there's some guy back with a bunch of levers going like that, like and some, they... some jacked up like Chuck E. Cheese kind of thing. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, what? Well, I think you well, let's, pay a lot more. let's go look, see what's see what's behind right, the door, and if we get to a dead one. end or something, we can come back and wiggle the GI Joe. All right, what's behind door number one, John? Okay, the door slides into the south. You see that there is an extremely narrow corridor that goes back into the darkness, uh, at least thirty feet. Well, uh, you're only if you're only using the black light torch, um, it goes beyond the twenty feet. What about my infravision? Does the black light uh, torch mess up my infravision? It does. So you have, um, it's basically like in the center of that wall there, um, it is only five feet wide. And I, I actually mean that this time, five feet. Oh, Ooh, let very, me modify my drawing. Very narrow. So John, is it is it angling down so that like would go underneath the, the it, corridor that we were in before? It is not, it goes straight back. Because the other corridor sloped at the ends. Oh, so we would probably be going above it. I think so. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah that makes sense. Okay, okay. We were under, so we would be like going above. Okay, cool. Um, let's, uh, okay. let's take a look. I, I look around. Look, <laughs> is the, the ceiling and the floor, like, is it weird in there? So it or is, is unmarked, undecorated stone. It <laughs> looks like no one has been down here in quite sometime nice nice that is a good sign <laughs> yeah okay in we go oh yeah we... i've got my wait, shield wait, wait wait look at john's face <laughs> wait look at john's face <laughs> okay i don't know how you beat your employees at poker dude because you're poker face so... <laughs> i don't know man i mean avaricious goes first i said that it's right just, it's i mean it's just the hallway uh, yeah can what we, is the marching can... order you cannot stand abreast of each other here you have to go in. all right i will go first who i have the highest ac and probably the most hit points at this point all right i've got a shield and a and i'm gonna have my hand axe out i'll go in the middle because i think uh you have uh ranged weapons correct uh yeah i could do that should i have my bow out instead yeah, that's Maybe. probably a pretty good idea if you're at the back do okay. We, do we hear? Do we hear anything, John? Yeah, I'd like to hear. I'd like to listen at the at the hallway. Yeah, yeah everyone just stand real quiet and let's listen. Okay, so you don't you don't hear anything. Uh, oh. There is way down there, way in the darkness. There is a faint smell of putrescence. Wafting. Well, we, 
lots of stuff putrid down here. It's very true. This is not a not an uncommon smell. Okay. But we're not seeing any light sources down at the end of the hallway. Um, checking. No. And the dust on the floor is undisturbed. Yes. And we don't hear anything. You don't hear anything, no. I mean, this sounds great. What could, uh, you know. Yeah. And, and there's, uh, when we open the door, do we get like, you know, a blast of air, like when they open up the the well of souls, whatever, and in Indiana Jones. No, or... no, actually, it appears that the air is circulating quite well. Okay. And yet, it still smells like death. All right, shields up, Captain. I put my shield in front of me. I got my hand axe. Okay, so right. with Avaricios, I'm um, standing now. I know that Gorand and Squeegee have um, infravision, but Avaricios with the black light torch, it's standing in the middle. Basically, the, that extent of that is only reaching about five feet in front of Gorin, but based upon where he is in the order. Uh, right. So just just be aware. Um, so I you, thought it was twenty foot radius. It is, but he's basically like fifty. He's at like the fifteen foot position behind Gorin, right? It's Gorin, then you, then Avaricios. He takes up five feet. Right. So, can I actually move forward so that my infravision is not obstructed? Uh, yeah, so you want to be out of the torchlight. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, Gorn disappears into the darkness. You hear him scuffling. I'd like ahead. to stay, like, just like, right, just so I get to watch his dwarven butt. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah. And down the corridor you go. So, um, it, it goes like a bullet straight down the corridor um, for 50 feet. I, I am trying to be quiet, John. Understood, yep. Yeah. Um, I, I think we are all being careful. <clears throat> it opens up into a very large chamber directly in the center of the eastern side of this rectangular chamber. Um, it is roughly 50 feet north to south and about 80 feet east to west. Wow. Okay. Big money. You were opening, you were coming into it directly in the center of the eastern wall. However, the northeastern and southeastern walls are actually um, uh, diagonal, meeting at the point where you are entering from. You understand, Ted? No. Say that again. So, so just draw the, like draw, the rough, draw the rough dimensions 80 by 50. Five, ten, oh, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70. Okay, yep. Eight, uh, 50. Okay, I made a box. Yeah. Yes, now the northeastern and the southeastern uh, portions are actually diagonals, uh, which start. Like that? Uh, that is, let me just count. I think you might actually be right on the money. You are right on the money. Correct. Uh, okay. That's how I would have designed a dungeon. <laughs> All right. Okay. The walls of this place rise out of the gloom um, about 30 feet up uh, into a coffer vaulted ceiling. All right. Um, there is a worn statue of Thoth that dominates the chamber and the western side. It basically is directly in the center, about 10 feet off the western wall. Um, it commands like immediate attention when you walk in. It's uh, on a pedestal lying in the center of what is a low pool. All right. Um, and the pool itself is approximately 20 feet in diameter, directly in the center of the room. There are rows of columns that lead from the entrance towards that toward that statue, and there are empty iron sconces that line the walls at 15-foot intervals. So you can see that just over half of the columns um, looks to have been toppled. Uh, the sconces are not lit. The sconces are not lit, yeah. And the yeah, floor... The columns because of, are like, like this, John? Uh, the columns are, uh, yeah, more or less. They basically, 
Yeah, Do they continue the, into no, the pool. The the statue, the, the the pool around the statue though, Ted is twenty feet. You've got it like, like, like these much. are ten foot squares. I did a twenty foot radius. Twenty foot, like per, uh, you know, a diameter. Oh, I see. Twenty yeah. foot diameter, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. yeah. Sorry, Charlie. Yeah. Okay, twenty foot diameter. Well, that makes a lot more sense. Yeah. So, so almost half of these, almost half of these pillars have been thrown down. And they, um, that because they've been thrown down, that leaves the entire floor is like covered in dust and fragments of stone. Um, but you can see that there are clear tracks, like really obvious that are leading through the debris. Um, and they lead towards a door that is in the Southwestern portion of the room. Um, but as soon as your eyes kind of take in the, the immensity of the statue in the Western side, you can see that there, uh, the next thing that catches your eyes is that there are several rotting corpses on the ground looks like to be goblins that are dressed in sort of archaic archontian um uniforms and such humans of all varying stripes and uh what appeared to be some sort of amalgamation like some sort of beast men you can see that there's a couple uh like where they have the the forms and they're wearing like um very very um uh archaic but also very well maintained archontian armor but their heads are actually of beasts. Um, like there's some are pigs, some are dogs, some are sheep, some are rats. Can we see, um, we see Beastman on one of the stelly or columns or obelisks or something like depictions of Beastman at one point or another? I don't remember. Um, okay. What, where's the southwest uh, western door, John? So the southwestern door where the tracks are leading to are is on the southern wall in the very far corner. Like right here? Correct. Okay. Yeah. Um, and the tracks are very clear. So you can see the, here. The tracks are. Sorry. The tracks are very clearly going from the door to where. Uh, they are. <clears throat> Let's see. Oh, uh, sorry. Check here. It looks like they're coming from where you are entering from. And yet there were no tracks in the tunnel. The tunnel was free of debris. But and dust. We were, no dust in the tunnel either? Uh, actually, yeah, something's not right there. Yeah, I don't know. I'm three further say, about it. In the meantime, uh, there are tracks moving through. Okay, uh, okay. We see tracks. Yeah. Okay, but these I, bodies on the floor are... Uh, not skeletal there there's still meat left but it's old and putrid yeah so they are um they have actually been that's right yeah they're they're old corpses they have been piled in front of the statue in the pool um and in even more horrifying you see that there are even a fresher pair of human corpses two human corpses that have been stripped of all clothing and they have been pinned bodily to the northern wall with iron nails they're just hanging Ooh. there by their arms dead uh, i would you know, are I we would, playing are we playing warhammer yeah. i just <laughs> there's, there's more stuff so the, um in addition to the damage to the columns that you see you can see that the this entire temple thing here has been desecrated obviously desecrated the walls are smeared with dirt and feces um all the guilt from the frescoes and the in the art and stuff like that has been pulled off there are obscene images and vulgar phrases that have been scrawled across the walls of the temple that are in our Kantian. um like a few samples includes there's one that says um the ibis has been shorn uh a, a whole bunch that actually say like fuck thoth <laughs> um Ooh. we have known like in quotations we have known thoth but there is better flesh to be known in our contos um and there's one that says like, "Where's your power now, bird brain?" It's like a, 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 a not quite as a forceful one. Um, uh, there is an enormous sketch uh, on the western wall behind the statue uh, of a crocodile devouring an ibis that has been splashed in black paint on the western wall. And I believe uh, crocodile. He that is um, set. No. Yeah. Uh, it actually, yes, that is correct. It is one of the forms of the, of the old god set. Um, um, so would... the statue um, is is standing in the classic semi advancing pose, one one leg in front, um, arms are at its side. Uh, 
uh, about 20 feet tall. He's wearing a kilt um, and a headdress with a single feather in it. Black marble is the body. Um, the ibis head is white marble. The eye sockets are gaping holes, much deeper and inset than the other empty holes you've seen for the eye sockets before. Um, uh, it looks like the statue has been completely defaced. It is covered with bits of dung and streaks of dried blood. Uh, the head of a dog, uh, a dog-headed beast man has been impaled on the feather headdress. Like, it's literally stuck on top of the statue. It's just like, with it's like dog tongue, like, uh, lolling out. Um, yeah. Uh, the pool, which is around it, is, um, is about three foot tall. Uh, I, I misspoke. It's about 15 feet in diameter, Ted. Sorry about that. Um, uh. It looks it's like, like it a, is... a moat around the statue, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So like a basin around the right. statue itself. Um, it is currently filled with some sort of awful smelling black sludge. When your eyes light upon it, you can see a small pocket of bubble just go. All right. Let's avoid getting too close to that. Right. Yeah. Anyone else uh, think that that might have something to do with what the halflings fed that poor goblin? black stuff maybe um i would also just like to point out i can't see any of this because it's like farther than my torch can, can go yeah assuming you're kind of walking around the room yeah, this, this uh, assumes we've explored a little bit um i'm just giving you the layout here uh yeah. let me see if i'm missing something here Pretty is there okay that exit for in the southwest is it an actual door and is it shut uh it is yes um there so if more. we need to, we can light a torch and we'll probably be okay. Yeah, there are numerous, uh, uh, what do you call it, um, sconces here. Which, but are they lit or they're empty? They're empty, yeah. Yeah, okay. Do we want, uh, do we want, to, do we want to light it up and take around to... Jiggle the light switch. Um, yeah, I mean, um, so okay. let's see, just real quick, we got the possibility of corpses coming alive and attacking us. Something in the water leaping out and killing us ooze or tentacles of some sort we've got the possibility of whoever did this coming out of the door and killing us and eating us uh or uh traps falling on our heads and killing us so that about covers as far it? as the traps go i don't know about that since we would see evidence of probably the other idiots tromping through here triggering them right so uh, fair but i was thinking like maybe the columns were some sort of yeah. falling trap or something but yeah you're probably right so can as, we as we as we walked around the columns, did, did they look like they were, like, you know, struck by something and knocked over, or did have they crumbled with age? It looks like they were struck, because yeah, the yeah. other the other columns are that are that have not been struck down look very very solid. Um, I'm just reading more, sir. So sorry, I'm just kind of giving you more information as I find it. So there is another. Um, there is an, uh, a same the same door is on the opposite side of the room. So in the in the northwestern corner, there is another door. Okay. Um, and you can see that on the diagonal walls from where you arose, actually, like when you kind of step into the room and kind of look back to where you were, you can see that up above, um, about 15 feet up, it appears to be they are galleries of some sort. Like there's something up there. Like you can stand up there and look out over oh. this room. And there are two... That sounds interesting. There are two smaller doors um, that um, are near those galleries. So um, directly on the northern and southern walls um, on the 10-foot square, directly to the west of those galleries are, are small doors. We like, should go check those out. They might lead right up to the gallery. I like that. Let's let's try the north one because it's not the south one. <laughs> um, and just let me check one other thing here. Just so I'm not... Let me make that a little more square. Yeah, okay. John, when you when you say small door, like goblin size, like animal size. No, I just mean like they're not as grand as the. Um, okay, so like a regular, a regular, uh, a regular regular size. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay. So the whole yeah, so okay. basically sum it all up. It's a it's a scene out of nightmare. Like there was a deliberate desecration of a temple of Thoth, right? Yeah. They're completely jacked up. Avarizos is completely hundred percent right that it looks like it was done by, um, people who are beholden to set, um, corpses. And have been befouled and like you got all sorts right goblins goblins beastmen and humans have been piled up in front of the statue you've got two humans that have been stripped naked and pinned to the northern wall um vandalism all over the place um and uh black sludge uh, it looks like they have also 
either with age or maybe it has been deliberate, have fouled the um, statue where the, um, the fouled the fountain, the basin uh, in which the statue can be found. How, how long does it look like those humans have been dead? The ones that are pinned to the wall? Uh, it looks fairly recent, like within, by recent, I mean in the grand scheme of things, um, probably months, maybe, maybe weeks. Okay. So they're probably a bit dry and not juicy anymore. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, oh. I like the idea of this small north door that might go up to the gallery. Let's go take a look. I like, I like that too. Okay. So we'll listen at that one, John. Uh, which one? So the the small door to the north that we think leads to the north gallery. Okay, cool. And I'll give a little listen check. I got a four out of six, which I guess is perfectly ordinary. Nothing fancy about my goblin ears there. Okay, so I'm going to say that take a turn. Uh, uh, assessing and maybe listening at that. Assessing the room and listening at the door takes a turn. Yeah. It's now 10 a.m. All right. And um, uh, while I'm listening, do I see is this door locked or latched or barred or? Uh, no, it is not. It looks like. Does it say dead inside or anything like that? No. Nope. What do you guys think? Open it. Let's open. Yeah, it. let's do it. Yeah, let's, right. do it. let's do it. I'll open it. It, it creaks open, uh, revealing what appears to be a um, a ramp, which goes directly north for ten feet and then cuts uh, directly eastward. Um, and narrows considerably as it rises upwards, which you assume which will exit out onto the gallery. Something like that. Or is it wider? Uh, no, it's like, it's narrow like that. You, you basically got it. Yeah, okay. Yeah. And it basically so, kind of uh, zags around till it kind of connects um, up with a small gallery, um, which is about uh, five feet wide and basically runs the length of that of that uh, diagonal wall. Yep, you got it. Nicely done, Ted. Okay. Um, so the ramp itself is decorated with scenes of servants of Thoth carrying various gifts of valuable objects, codices and scrolls. Uh, the scenes are faded and worn, but they lack the overt desecration that you that you saw in the main temple. Don't seem right. to go up there. And when you kind of exit out the ramp, you do and so you find yourself on top of this um, this kind of standing gallery, which just has like a a low barrier um, to prevent you know at waist height that allows you to like look over, and you kind of get the the whole panoply of um, of the temple, like a nice little view, fifteen feet above the floor. Nothing up here? Does not appear to be, no. No detritus or? No. Does being up so, here give us any kind of um, viewpoint that we wouldn't have had before as far as like where the tracks go or any other, uh, like a danger of the pool? Like are we, the different perspective, is it allowing us to see the room from a different light, I guess? Something we missed before. Uh, no, not that you can see. Can we see across the way into the other gallery? Any anything useful or like? Oh, look that that other gallery is full of skulls or something like that. <laughs> like straight um, across, yeah. Yes, you actually see when you look across the other gallery. Um, there appears to be some items of some sort, sort of piled in the center of it. Can't quite uh, tell that, because you kind of you kind of have to. You're looking at the railing, but you can see that there's something yep. lumped there. Oh. Uh, let's go check that out. I like it. Let's check it out. Okay, so Maybe it's quietly and carefully and quietly and carefully and very quietly and carefully. Yep. Down you go. Carefully. Okay. Um, you can hear uh, as you are making your way across the temple floor to get to the uh, other door. You can hear from the pool. You hear another blah, blah, louder this time. Blah, blah, blah. And like you hear like a little a slap as like a, a, a like a wave of black muck sort of comes over the rim and bleh, and slaps onto the ground. Oh, that's a terrible, terrible sign. We should be ready to run. Yeah. Um... John, when when we came down the, the narrow corridor down the secret door, did we hear the door close? Or did it seem to stay it, open as we... As it, we seemed to, it seemed to stay uh, open. Okay, okay yeah. that's that's nice. Yeah. All right, so I'll listen at the other door, I guess. 
Okay. And hopefully I'll hear, uh, I hear fuck all, as they say. Uh, Roll to six, John. You did not hear anything yet. All right. I will confidently assume that means there's nothing to hear. And I will open the door. All right. You have a mirror of the same sort of ramp that goes up to that gallery. The gallery is of the same um, dimensions. Um. Uh, on the floor of the gallery, when you get up there, you can see that there appears to be a small little cache of adventuring gear up there. There is a bullseye lantern, three flasks of oil, and a bag of ten iron spikes. Hot diggity dog. Uh, let me write that down. So, what was it? Uh, bullseye, second, a, a lantern. bullseye lantern, three, three flasks of oil, and ten spikes. Bullseye lantern... Three oil and spikes. Well, uh, I say we uh, definitely take the oil and the spikes. Do we have a lantern, guys? Uh, we do. In... We don't have. I mean, bullseye lanterns are pretty cool because you know they. Can... Oh, that's Let's true. Take... Let's take all of it. Once again, the ramp here is all uh, frescoed out with uh, uh-huh. worshippers and Does servants. This one servants also, of also seem to have been untouched, like the other one. Mm-hmm. Um, well, I'll tell you what, I'm going to hand it to Mort. I'm going to say, Mort, carry this stuff. So I got it, boss. Thank you, Mort. You're a, you're a saint. You could probably fill the lantern. And then oh, yeah, the lantern is full or empty? Uh, the lantern is empty. Oh, well, let's, yeah, we'll fill the lantern. Good thinking, Mike. And we'll make yeah. one slot there. Now, Full lantern want... and ten spikes. Now, do we do we want to wake up whatever's in that pool and then run away if it's bad? Well, it's definitely bad. It's definitely. I think it's already. <laughs> I mean, it, it, maybe it's like a big, you know, chicken or something that like. It's not a cuddle sleep. monster. Yeah. It could be. You never know. I okay. Should we bet on it? I mean. Well, I, uh, I'm, you know, I bet I'm more of a bet, like having a drink about it. Yeah, I mean, Everard's black tentacles come from somewhere, and this looks like as good a place as any. Um, or is that copyright? Can I say that, John? That say what? Everard's black tentacles. Am I going to get in trouble with wizards? <laughs> yeah, be careful. I don't know. <laughs> uh, it's, I'm it's sure it's... wizards draped down the hall. <laughs> <laughs> Bunch of lawyers dressed with wizards. Right. Ah, what you guys are. So what do you do? Um, so let's, we find all this stuff, we give it to Mort, look out the gallery, are we seeing more blurps, any activity down there at the pool? Uh, no, just like, yeah, the blurping, basically. So it, it's not like boiling or anything like that, but every once in a while, you know, it's like... So... I, I, I all right, I, options I, here. We could go through either of the doors, we could leave. I, I think it's, if we get... You said I some think... of it splashed on the floor, right? Yeah. We don't have a 10-foot pole, though, right? Uh, Mort has a 10-foot pole because I was planning ahead. Okay, cool. Nice, Mort. Mort, so, Mort I'll poke the stuff. Yeah, boy, it's yeah, okay. Let's put something organic on the end of the 10-foot pole. Mm. Like dried like meat or the something goblin. like that. Put right? The goblin. And dip it in the puddle that splashed onto the floor and see if it reacts. Or wait, what well, that the corpses are between us and that we might want to just poke the poke the corpses. Yeah, I don't want to get too close to the black stuff and have the corpses come up behind us. I think we should be investigating the corpses if we're going to go that direction. Um, and one of the things I was wondering, John, is did the I mean the corpses have all been dumped here, more or less in a pile. That's correct. Yeah. Uh, and you said there's but they're still wearing robes and armor and such. Uh, yeah. Yeah, they're so they're not necessarily exactly looted. So there might be something valuable amongst the corpses. Hey, poke them with the ten foot pole. Yeah, let's go down. Well, that that is the unfailing uh, way to determine if something is undead. Poke it with a stick. Poke okay. it with a stick. <laughs> okay, so you're you're having more poke poke it. Science, man. <laughs> no, uh, I'll poke it, John. Yeah, okay. Mort hands you the pole. Wait, wait, are you poking the bodies or are you poking the muck? First, I'm going to poke bodies. the bodies because Ted's a chicken. But I'm not a chicken. I think there's money in there. Okay. Okay. All so right. yeah, they don't. They don't move. 
All um, right. Maybe you could push one of the bodies into the black muck. So as you're as you're kind of poking it, Goran, um, you hear like the sound come from the basin again, and then when you kind of you kind of look up at it, you see real quick you see some sort of slimy mucus covered membrane break the water and then sink below again. Something tentacly and There's awful. Definitely tentacle in there. Okay, <laughs> and go back down again. Um, so the question is, is how long is the tentacle? It's a 15 foot wide pool with a statue in the center of it. Well, it okay. So let, around. Let, let me ask something. Like I, I am no good at the distance unless there's like skeletons or zombies or something. Okay. But do you two guys have ranged back? Yeah, I know you do. I do. Or do you have something that you can shoot from afar? Uh, Mort has know. a crossbow. I, w I wonder, like if if we if we light the you know add, put some light in the room, right? Like light the, light the torch and put in one of the sconces. Uh, have our ranged fighters up on the you know on the balconies, looking down. They might be able to, like, if this thing comes out, to shoot it from afar. Get, get you know pre-tie a rope so you can slide down and run if you need to. I can stay here uh, in yeah, the man. back next to the hallway. So you're thinking of staging like, uh, you know, an intentional attack on whatever's in the thing. Well, I don't see. Like, I think if we if we try to sneak into either of those two doors to the north or south, I think we will definitely be in reach of whatever's yeah, in there. Yeah, I agree. So uh, what I'm wondering is, can we drag bodies out of the pile and and see and what they heave them into the pool? I, I was thinking about heaving a body into the pool. Yep. Yep, that one thought crossed my mind. I don't really want to touch dead bodies too much, but uh, um, well, maybe we can maybe we can lay them to rest. You know, about a little Molotov cocktail into the black pool. Got some oil. You know, we could we could do that and be ready to run away. Take a lit rag into one and chuck it in, and well, we could also here. I've got my. I'm looking over my my stuff. I've got I've got this crowbar. Uh, it's not really a grappling hook, but we could tie a rope to the crowbar, throw it onto the bodies, and pull them out this way. Search them a little bit better that way. All right, you guys, to, to, to do something. Yes. I like Matt's plan. I like Matt's plan. All right, so I, I tie a rope. Well, some, can somebody help me? This hand is no good. Oh, yeah, yeah. I will tie a rope to a crowbar <laughs> and hand it to Matt. Okay. And then? All right, I'm going to... Uh, uh, Stand back to the edge of what I can see with my rope. I'm going to throw the crowbar across the bodies, and then try to pull, pull the pull one, you know, whatever it catches. Try to pull it back. Okay, how far away are you from the um from the basin? Let's see. I am. Well, if you put the bodies at the edge of your torchlight, you'd be about 25 feet or so from the basin. Would be my guess. Yeah, Maybe... I'm thinking. I'm thinking about right here. Okay. That way, I can throw twenty feet to the corpses, okay. and then pull it back. All right. So yeah. So this all takes a turn to get all set up. Yeah. And, yeah, uh, yeah. and it's working. Bang! Sack right into right into the pile of corpses. You you grab one. It's a it's a goblin. Nice. <laughs> Snag me, <Right>. me lad. <laughs> <laughs> and you drag it out. The My cousin Pete. Yeah. Right. I know this guy. <laughs> Wait, okay. Uh, is uh, the goblin wearing pants? Uh, it's the goblin. Yes, it, it is. It's actually a, uh, it's wearing like um, like a goblin version of Arcantian. Uh, like it looks like, not like Mort. Like Mort has like full on regalia, right? Like a, official Arcantian. Legionnaire. This looks like a like goblin handcrafted facsimile of that kind of armor, right? It's not not quite right. as um as nice as you drive so, forward Arcantian now. Arcantian auxiliary. Yeah, but what I mean, it's like um, it's like a a a mimicry of it. It's not official. Uh, you know what I mean? Right. So, anyways, it's um, um, as you drag the body away, and as the crowbar is like scraping against the ground, as in the body is against the ground, um, there are the the black sludge erupts from the basin. Six okay. massive slime and mucus coated um. Uh, tentacles burst out like forward over the bodies 
and wrap themselves around that goblin body and physically just yank it back. Okay, they can hold have it. it. So it's sort of like that scene in like Fellowship of the Ring, right, with the with the lurker in the deep before the uh, mines of Moria. Pulls that body yep. back, holds it over the the basin. So it's basically like in front of the desecrated statue. Shakes uh -huh. it, and you can see like it's just like a rag doll. It's like it looks like it's making sure like it's dead, and then it basically pulls it into the basin. Right before it pulls into the basin, you see like some sort of horrid beak-like thing open from below, and then it, it immediately gets swallowed into the um into like it, it sinks back below into the into the sludge. There's no <clears throat> there's no like contested check like it has massive like unheard of strength compared to yours. So oh it yeah, just, I'm it just, not it just takes the body. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And as it shake the body around, magic rings and coins fly out of its pockets. No, more like <laughs> no. shit and sludge everywhere that spatters the walls and the statue. And All you, right. um, you can see um, as you're like, holy shit! As you're like, as your heart rate is sort of stopping, um, that uh, and you're assessing it, that it looks like these tentacles were able to reach at least thirty feet outwards from the basin, at least. <laughs> okay, so I back up ten feet. Um. <laughs> Wow, guys, I'm not sure I can handle those tentacles. Mm -mm. I don't think we can sneak past. You can't even approach the uh, the doors on either side without without engaging with them, right? I mean, well, maybe we could distract them long enough, like you know, get it to grab another corpse, and while it's shaking the corpse, we run. But well, I'd rather run, not run into a room that we then might not be able to get back through. Exactly, or, exactly. and we don't know if those doors are locked either. Yeah, that would be a horrible surprise. <laughs> ah, I'm gonna die. Um, yeah, I, I I start like backing up very slowly. Yeah, guys, I kind of feel like this room might not be our route for today till we till we get some heavy artillery. <laughs> um, unless that heavy artillery, I mean literally heavy heavy artillery. I mean literally, yeah, howitzer thirty millimeter at least. Um, <laughs> unless that black goo is flammable, which somehow I suspect it's not, but. Um, might be worth a torch just to find out. It's like toss, you toss. actually light, John. Can we create like a wick and make a Molotov cocktail out of a flask of oil? Uh, yeah. I think I remember I seeing mean, that. Like, like it's a, like an official like weapon. Yeah. Attack you I mean, I, I'm game to you know throw a lit bottle of oil over there. Let's do it. We just found, we just found three. <laughs> We just we just yeah, found three. Right. It's like th free shit. Why don't why don't we why don't we do all three? Well, because one we poured into a lantern already. True. Why don't we do two? Because <laughs> then we would have two fewer. Oil. I mean, one should be enough, right? Let's just like, see we'll one know. And, and see how much it pisses the thing off. But the, uh, I mean, I'm ready to go down. Run. Yeah. All right, so okay. Guys, That's fine. That lit into the pot, into the pool of black sludge. Yeah, I think we need to. Why don't we try and draw the tentacles out? Do what we did uh, last time with the with the crowbar and the wood corpse. Okay. Get the tentacles to come out and then whip the uh, whip the thing at it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Deal. But I think we have a step back a little further this time. Yeah. yeah we I'm have a, go a little bit farther. Away. Yeah. Yeah. All right. All right. Sorry. So crowbar. That's fine. Okay, so you try it. Yeah, the tentacles cool. come uh, uh, come lashing out again. Uh, Throw lit Molotov. You're, you're throwing it at the tentacles or into the pool? At the tentacles, I think. Right. Okay. Well, I was thinking sort of at the Thoth statue, so it breaks and spills oil. I thought maybe we try and get it right in the beak. Yeah, yeah. Get I, the get the. I'm, get not, the I'm thing. not that good of a shot. All right, I just want to get it over there. Go ahead and roll. Who's throwing okay. it? Mike's throwing uh, I'll, it. I'll throw it. Uh, all right, John. I actually have a plus one for my decks. You. It bounced right off the 20. I right. hate this fucking oh, thing. Right, so it, 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 the surface. it goes flaming into the into the uh into the pool. Um you don't know if it hit the body of the Kraken thingy, but it um it basically uh, gets like sucked right into the into the black pool. Um the 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 slime technically thing does not seem to notice. Um, actually, you know what? It does. It actually drops the body and retreats its tentacles back into the water. Right, so the, but the black slime does not turn out to be tar. 
No, it's not tarred. <laughs> not, you know, it just it, yeah, it sunk into into there and just went right out. Um, mutt, you know, a lot of that sludge stuff has basically has spilled out over into uh, outside the basin now. Um, okay. So like the the floor around, like I would say, about ten feet out surrounding it is all slick and gross. And it's not like corroding the bodies where it's touching them or anything. No, else. but they are the bodies are kind of sitting in that shit now. Right. Well, now I don't want to go closer. No, no, if I'm it's done. All in the... Gross. Yeah. Another I mean, turn goes. All up for it before, but the if it's gross, I'm then... pretty much done in here. Oh, jeez. I kind of want to do it again. Well, if you really want to, Mort will hand you the other flask of oil, or you Let's could try, try again. Curling the whole lantern, but I kind of liked having the lantern. No, I don't think we oh, should yeah, get rid of the lantern. Okay. Yeah, the lantern. All right, I will cross off the other flask of oil. Hey, John. One more. Let me know if the tentacles pop out so I can bother to roll. Try this time I'm, I'm extending my die tray so it doesn't bounce off the edges. Try uh, to break pull, the oil. Pulling a body like, this time, uh, the, the, the tentacles do not come out. Oh, it's smart. It's learned. It's got intelligence. Well, let's 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 inspect the corpse then. Can you get it close enough to us, Matt? I don't know who I got. Pull on that rope. Uh, yeah. Give me a second. I'm gonna check. Okay. So we're wait. gonna attach one of the spikes to the end of his ten foot pole and try and spike the corpse when it gets within ten feet to help pull it in. All right. So you end up pulling in a um. Uh, a beast man corpse. Oh, nice, nice. Yeah, this one actually has the head of a pig. Oh yeah. Um, mm, bacon. Bacon. Yes. It appears to be wearing ruined. Uh, ring mail. Okay. In a very militaristic fashion. Right. It has no weapons on it though. Now, John, and, we as as normal Arcantian citizens, we've never seen any like living beast people no right? like this is no. weird this is like yeah. very very strange yeah now they're um they their proportions except for the heads themselves are like completely human right like their hands are normal like there's no hooves or anything like that right um everything seems to be quite normal it's just like from the from the neck up they have um these animal uh heads basically so they're not like trollocs from Wheel of Time, is what I'm trying to say, right? right. They're, they're like they got gotcha. pockets, pockets, pouches, belts. No, nope. doesn't appear to be anything of value on them. Is the head like sewn on? No. Ugh. Oh, that's gross. No, nope. gross question, but but no. Full full autopsy. Here. Oh sure, I'm the only one thinking it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, he doesn't. I saw Mars attacks. Anything. I know how you aliens think. Um. All right, so let me see here. Should we drag this back to Plumthorn and leave it at his door? Hey, they get 10%. That's right. This is all we found, dude. Here you go. <laughs> <laughs> we, give, we give him an arm. Yeah, that's right. Get 10%. I guess that's uh, more like a hand. I don't know, guys. I think this is uh, that thing looks like more than uh, more uh, dumb than I can chew. Let's. Yeah. Uh, you know what, though? Once we've kind of worked out the radius of the tentacles, I do want to poke around in the debris in the room a little bit just to see if we've kind of missed like a... I mean, I would feel better if David were here because he would definitely be up there poking the water right now. And then we could get by the tentacle monster while it's eating him. So... <laughs> oh, David, man, he's always there for you. We ought to just come back. He's not going to watch the episode. We'll just come back next week with David. <laughs> I, you know what? Up. If we ask him, did you watch the episode? And he says, no, I'm totally down with this plan. Okay. <laughs> Let's do it. All right. What In the do? meantime, maybe we should retreat. Let's beat a, a hasty uh, retreat. I wanna, once we know the radius of the tentacles, I want to poke around in debris that it can't get to. You know, kick the rocks, John, you know, kind of look under okay. rubble and see if there's anything you know, of value lying around. Gotcha. I doubt that. But maybe there is. Yeah, if he's doing that, I want to look and see if there's like a secret door... Uh, on those diagonal walls. Like under the galleries? Yeah, While they're doing that, why don't you let me borrow your bow and I'll keep watch and make sure that nothing um, nothing comes in. Mort hands you a crossbow. Thank you. I will keep watch while they're searching. Okay, so... Mort is going to uh, take his sword and go stand at the tunnel entrance and guard there. Okay. 
All right. So, Squeegee, you're poking around the debris, and Everest, you're looking yeah. for secret doors underneath yeah. the gallery? Yeah, underneath the, on the two diagonal walls. Okay. Underneath and Goran, what are you doing? I'm going to basically, out of range of the tentacles, kind of in front of that doorway, I will have the crossbow that Mort was carrying, and I will basically just keep watch. So if anyone comes through those doors, I'll be able to, you know, I want to keep an eye on the north and south doors in case anyone comes through. Right, gotcha. And we're watching the tunnel that we okay. came through. So you do not, uh, Squeegee and Avaricios, you do not uh, find anything of interest in the debris or on the walls. Goran, however, um, when you were keeping an eye on those doors in the western area, right, in the southwestern door where the tracks lead to, you are, uh, uh, you're surprised when you see, like, not through that door. However, a piece of the wall on the western wall, like, right next to that door, like, right in that corner, but on the western wall, actually slides back, like, six inches. And you hear whispered, hurried voices, and then that, like, quickly goes, shook, and shuts again. Oh, dang it. Interesting. Uh, and you said on the western wall, I'm sorry, by the north door or south door? Oh, like right the, there? Correct. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. That's interesting. So, well, somebody heard our commotion. Oh, obviously, I will, I will walk over to where they are searching and whisper to them what I saw. So, when so, that door slid open, Mike, did you see illumination come out? Oh, that's a good question. John, uh, because... Actually, I would say that, yes, you did see a, a small flash of illumination. And now that you're kind of looking at that debris path, Gorand, you can see that the path actually probably leads there. Gotcha. Oh, that's awesome. Let me, let me add a little line in right like that. It was flickering, the light, by the way. Right, so torchlight, perhaps. But the question is, if we're investigating in a 20-foot radius of blacklight, they may not have seen us. But they, they heard our ruckus, but didn't see us, I would think. that's Yeah, that's correct, yeah. Yeah, so Squeegee and Goran being at different places were just using their their dark, uh, their dark infravision, um, and Avaricios was the one using the light over in the farther end, yeah. So everything is basically, everything in the Western end is now in darkness. Interesting. So I don't know that that changes our plan any. That tentacles are not something I really want to cross. Well, not only that, but I mean, if we give it time to maybe quiet down, we might be able to sneak by if we're very, very quiet. Right. But then like Matt said, or like Mike said, we get up to that secret door and how do we open it? <laughs> Like we're standing there, like sitting ducks. On, on uh, yeah, and on on Definitely top of that, right now, right now, tentacle guy is on high alert. So, right, 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 right. Um, so thoughts, gentlemen. I don't know, man. I don't like going into a place I can't get out of. Yeah, or being trapped in front of a door I don't know how to open, or right. Yeah. Um, Especially so our when. Option yeah, especially when uh, you know everything there has been alerted by our lab. So you have, um, if you want to risk it, you've got the doors to the north and the south, the secret door to the southwest. Um, you could, you know, you could search more if you want. Search other areas of the room. Search those ramps. Search the galleries. Um, we didn't really search search the ramps, but or you go back. I thought we did technically search the galleries. Um, right. But you're right, we didn't search the ramps. Is there more detritus out of the range of the tentacles that I could actually search? Or did I hit all of it? You basically hit the like the ground detritus, like the ruins of those right. pillars. So if I search the floor further, I'm in range of tentacles, I believe. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm right. telling you there's nothing, there's nothing to be found on the ground. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Let's, let's go get the moan. We wanted to get the moan anyway. The what? Okay. Go to the uh, the, the to corridor the north. north of the debouche room where uh, we heard treating. the door. Okay. I think we should. Like this, and I'll tell you why. Like this, this dungeon is probably a maze of interconnecting corridors and stuff. 
we know what's in here. And now at some point we're going to come around and not open the door like idiots and discover the black tentacles on the other side. <laughs> yeah. Right. This is useful knowledge. Like yeah. It will, it will pay off later. True. What's your, uh, what's your uh, uh, slowest movement rate? Think, um, I think uh, that's still me. Uh, we're in the 20 60. range. Yeah. yeah you're at EX 20. rate. 60. 60. Okay. All right. So um, if you want to go all the way back down, I'm going to say it's going to take, um, Did I say? Oh man, my 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90. It's 200 feet between us and that door. Uh, yeah, I actually will do it off, off session, Ted, but I gave you the wrong length of that small, narrow corridor that entered into this room. Uh, but uh, can oh. you, are you able to like copy paste that entire room and like? I have no else. idea. If you, uh, if you are easy, if not, I, I feel bad. And you're gonna have to redraw it at some point later. But anyways, um, okay. So it it is actually going to take two turns to get back to the um, statue of Thoth in the intersection. Okay. 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 So you go back there. Uh, let me just check a little thing here real quick. All right, and you are back there. You don't hear any uh, noise coming from uh, the debouchement. Because the halflings are quiet. In the in the rat corridor, guys, there's that little question mark on the southern southern corridor. Do we need oh, to? Yeah, finish? we never. Yeah. Oh yeah, let's complete. Let's let's just peek and see what was in. Yeah, because we never went down, and finished that. Though. Yeah. Let's just go check it out since we're right here, and cross it off our list. Yeah. Yeah. Down this. In here. One moment. Uh. Yeah. Yeah. That sounds good. Okay, I'll lead the way again. Yeah, I don't seem to be able to cut and paste, John. How long should that quarter be? Uh, it's actually double. It's 100 feet long. Oh, wow. Oh. I know. <laughs> okay. I know. I know. I'm sorry. All right. All right. Well, more about it later. Yes, let's go uh, complete the uh, past the rat nest. Great. So we'll happen? come at it from the east then. Yep, I, I think so. Okay, so there's a door there that we haven't opened either. Oh, that's right. right down in the south. Right, the yeah. South end of that corridor. Uh, that's correct. Let's, yeah, yeah let's, let's do that thirty foot section in there. Okay, so yeah, it, it looks like you have on. um you have correctly surmised the. Uh... Let's close the secret door that goes to that corridor that leads to the tentacle yeah, monster. Yeah, we uh, pick thoughts thoughts nose again and close the door. Oh. Okay, so you um, uh, yeah, you you. Okay, sorry. Jump in between things here. Um, right. Okay. You have not messed with that. Okay. So yeah, you uh, you shine your black light torch down, um, and you kind of move down towards the corridor. Yes, indeed, you do see uh, the door there that you had seen previously. And looking around the corner, you can see that it does slope down as you suspected, um, down towards the remains of that rat's nest which you um, you had raided last time. Uh, as you do so, uh, as you're uh, well, no, you're using the black light torch. Never mind. Mm -hmm. um, mm. uh, yeah. So we're standing In, at the corner. Uh, at the corner. Here, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I mean, maybe you probably can't see the you probably can't see the rat's nest actually with um with your light. Can we listen in the corridor and see if we hear more skittering and twittering? You do. Yep. Yeah. Coming from that area. In fact, I say with your dark vision, you can actually see little points of body heat coming from within the nest. All right. But is there anything in that stretch that attracts our attention? Uh, you know, that's where the giant chest of coins is lying or anything fun like that. Uh, let me check here one second. I um, can go I ahead and step around the corner to take a need look. Need to more rats. So it, you remember that this entire loop was so full of debris that it actually reduced yeah. your movement, right? Yeah. Right. Um, but there were loads of niches that we didn't investigate. This is very true. Yeah, you can always spend time just spending time um, to to raid niches if you want to in here. Um, uh, so th this is all likewise the case in this in this section. There are a bunch of niches. You see, though, that right um, there is a section along the northern wall of that uh, of that east west corridor there, yep. where the um, 
uh, that the trash in front of it has been dis has been disturbed in like a regular pattern. Like right there. Uh, one to the west. Right next to the rats, then. Mm-hmm. Okay. Does it, does it look like uh, like a, a swinging door might have moved the trash out of the way like this? Uh, it cool. does look like that, actually. But uh, let me check. No, it no, it does not look like that. I'm sorry. It okay. uh, it looks like that. It's just that the trash has been disturbed and pushed aside right in front of that section of wall where like uh, everywhere else, like the trash is just piled up in big heaps everywhere. That's preventing your movement. This is like the only right. place where it's like a relatively clear a little bit. Are there niches in that wall? Yeah. Interesting. Do you guys feel like risking the rats again? Yeah. Especially now that it's only a 5% chance that they give us some horrible disease. <laughs> yeah. They can still bite your, your bazongas off. Um, That's true. Mine are very close to the ground. You see, I'm worried about that. So remember, they're sort of like stacked. Remember, there's like two, yeah, two per thing, like all the way up. Yeah, yeah. Which makes me wonder if one of those niches contains a uh, a secret door of some sort. Um, yeah, absolutely. That's uh, we should check those out. All right, all right. Let's risk it. Uh, got my um, hand axe out. Okay. Mort is going to load up the crossbow and stay back. Yeah, I, I don't have the crossbow anymore. I'll do shield and uh, hand axe. I've got my, my shield and my torch, as I always do. Yep, okay. So as you uh, move down the corridor, um, uh, eventually, like, the noise of your presence is, you know, even though you're trying to be quiet, uh, the, the rats, like, basically explode outward from the nest like they did the last time. So there's no giant rats this time. And they go skittering oh. up, the no up the northern... Uh, the north south passageway. Oh, damn. All right. Oh, let's investigate this spot. Okay. So there's how many niches in a in a given ten foot section? Uh let me check. I was just looking at that. Um I, I kind of remember like three for some reason. Pretty high, but I think there's it's too wide. So there's uh yeah they're five feet long and three feet high. And so there's uh so thus that means that there are five niches from floor to ceiling. The stone plugs oh, that sort of okay. have identifiers have all been make, basically removed. They're like part of the detritus on the ground. Okay. So my guess would be that the lowest niche is the way to start, given that they've had to move the trash aside. Why don't I, why don't I squeeze down there? I'm a little guy. Get down there and see if I can... What's in the niche? Uh, so there doesn't... It just appears to be junk in this niche on the bottom. Like nothing of interest. Even each is empty. Hmm? Like totally empty in this section. So, you, yes, you do notice that one is actually clear of detritus. It is the third ah. up from the floor. Okay. You should check the back and see if it's like a false back or something. Yeah, climb up there and scoop around. Uh, yes, indeed. Uh, as you kind of reach in there, you can see that indeed there appears to be the the back of the panel appears to be false and can be shifted to the left. Uh -huh. Shall I shift it, guys? Yes. Yes. Yeah, shift, shift it to I the left. I take a step off to one side, John, so yeah. I'm not hit by the poison as, cloud. As, um, as our dear friend would say, I shift a dift. Okay. You shift it to the left, and as you do so, a mass of claws reach out from uh, from beyond that panel, right out through the niche and uh, uh, try to grasp you and tear at you. And it's, it's a company, as these claws reach out and grab you by a smell of pungent rot and awful death uh, as you are uh, attacked. Oh, well, that's not fair. I run away screaming. <laughs> so there's that. <laughs> Probably not a problem, yeah. All right, what's your AC? 15. As it turns out, not 17. 15, Oops. all right. So um, as uh, as these things, you are able to leap back out, out, out and slam yourself against the southern wall um, as uh, as the rest of you guys also see like these like clawed, gray-skinned, withering flesh hands like, um, uh, like kind of reach out from beyond the borders of the niche, right? And um, it's like they come right at Squeegee's face as he kind of backs up. Ugh. And you hear like a ha, 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 
like no. coming from deep with from deep behind that panel, and then the the claws well, retreat. Was, I want to give it the axe, and I I would like to uh, you know do what we do and uh, turn undead. I think you should turn undead first. Yes. Okay. So uh, so spellcasting is definitely going off. Um, no, we are not in melee. So let's roll for initiative real quick. Who's uh, doing it? I got a one. I found it. I'll roll it. Good. All it was right. good, Sweetie. Four. Four. All right. Yeah. You guys That's win. Worth. All right. So no. it looks like um, as you guys are like, what the fuck? Um, you can see that the 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 clawed attempt is not the only thing that's happening something attached to those arms is actually bodily climbing through that panel and into the niche to drop into the corridor and try oh, to yes. attack you there, Love appear, it. there appears to be two of them two of these things that are about to crawl up but you have initiative so i'm just projecting what they're going to do right, so right now right. It's, it's your turn all right so uh right now you do not have like so these niches once again are like three feet tall. So you cannot like bring like like weapons to bear like this, right? Like against like full bodies. You basically have like arms that you can attack that you can attack, but they're going to be like a little bit of a higher AC because it's not like a full target. Do you understand what I mean? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Because you have to I'm jump going, on them, they have not fully emerged out of the niche. I'm going to hack it in arm as it comes out. Okay. Now, can, uh, my turning, it seems like if the turning works, that would be good to go first, right? Yep, so that's, you guys have to talk to your amongst each other how you want that to go down, because spellcasting yeah, spell yeah. happens before melee. In the right, so, yeah, he, I'm, I'm, you know, Squeegee would assume that Avarusius would be, you know, invoking his uh, divine powers. And if they fail, then uh, uh, Avarus, I'm thinking, guys, I'm thinking fighting retreat. Like, let's get the fuck out of here. Um, let's see. Let's see if we could take him first. Okay, your turn. So, Everest right. is going to go off first, right? The answer is no. <laughs> Ted has very bad memories of ghouls from past games. <laughs> <laughs> All right. For the folks at home, John has killed me in OSC three times. Two I of which have not killed ghouls. anybody. Oh, sure, sure, yes. <laughs> okay. I have died under the auspices of John three times, <laughs> twice. With the aid of ghouls. Right. Okay. Avaricios. All right. Uh, okay. I'm going to uh, roll 2d6. Okay. All right. Uh, so you hold four. forth your, your holy symbol of Lysian. Domine Patris Spiritu Avaricios. That's right. It's, it's, a, it's, a little, it's a little thing showing a, a flail. It's a little image of a flail. Uh, and I rolled a nine. You've rolled a nine. And I am and you are uh, level, level three. I'm level three. Okay. Um, all right. So you, um, you're like back creatures. And, uh, as, as the holy light emerges from your, uh, your holy symbol, the, the, uh, the, the, the claws like splay out and you hear like horrible screeching as you can see, like the, the claws, like sort of the flesh sort of sizzle and they like, and they like, they, uh, they wrench back violently, um, uh, back from the niche. And you can hear like bodies like slapping on the floor beyond and scurrying and muttering. I throw a frag grenade through the hole. Yeah, it's, it's the only way to be sure. That's the only way to be sure. Um, what? Get in there. The smell is Take still care. like redolent, like just pouring out of this hole in the back of the niche. Right. Uh, so when I push the back panel, like I just pushed it in or pushed it aside. Uh, he pushed it to the left. Was there a handle or something I could close it again? Uh, yeah, why not? Yeah, sure. But so before we close it, do you want to like throw some fire down there or something? Maybe burn them. I don't actually have anything lit right now. Um, but we we could do that. I mean, yeah. You know what? Um, that's what I'm gonna do, John. I'm gonna strike up my tinderbox and try and make a, a another uh molotov and climb in and huck it through the hole and uh if i can see what we're looking at as they burst into flames so much the better but uh, i'm being very careful okay i'm expecting things to come grabbing at me so i will be careful but i want to throw a lit oil flask through that hole so you're only using your infovision to look through there right before you chuck it in uh no, because we're within 20 feet, so I've got the black light. 
Yeah. Okay. Um, Maybe Matt should climb up there and hold the black light in the hole and tell me when to throw the oil. I'm up beside you. Okay. So when you, um, when you march up there with your Molotov and you're like, and you peer in with the back lit by the torch behind you and now, once again, like there's a small niche. So like the torch light isn't like, yeah. it can't illuminate the, whatever's yep. behind there. Yep. But, um, you do see that there is sort of some sort of elaborate, elaborate burial chamber beyond it does sketch out, um, in the weak light pouring over your shoulder of the basic dimensions, which appear to be a 20 foot by 20 foot square room. Um, which you are looking at from the southwestern portion. The southwestern, yeah, portion of that. Do you understand what I mean? Oop. Uh, sorry, my pen is giving me a little trouble. Here. Right with your one, two, three, four. Yeah, okay. Your map's a little off, but that's okay. What is going on here? Okay. Um, well, that's new. I've somehow managed to create a second layer or something on my map. All right. Well, whatever. All right. So it's a 20 foot by 20 foot uh, burial chamber. And you can see that directly in the center, there are two stone sarcophagi that have burst lids. Um, and the walls are uh, decorated with six large images of some sort that you just see, you know, now um, the... Um, the sarcophagi are made of some sort of dark black rock. You're not quite sure what it is. Um, huh? And the the Everisios's black light does illuminate something shining in both of those sarcophagi, like glinting off. Oh, of them. Guys. Now, in the huddled in the back northeastern corner, underneath some of those images on the wall, are these two creatures, which are most definitely ghouls, black in flesh. Crawling on all floors, um, uh, just reeking, reeking of rot, um, with glinting sharp teeth and sharp claws, and they are like, eh, you know, just kind of like huddled in the corner. Just, eh. Yeah, let's throw fire on them. Come on, fire! I'd love to map this out, but the map has stopped working for me for some reason. I don't it's all right. know why. It's a twenty foot by twenty foot room. Yeah. Okay. Um, right. So we see all that. Let's chuck the oil in and and see what happens. Like. Yep. Flit oil right on top of the ghouls. Okay, if you're aiming for the ghouls, like, it, like it'll burst no matter what. There will be fire. But if you want to try to hit the ghoul specifically, I need an attack roll. All right, all right. You I'm on it, Ted. Yeah, yeah, I'm on it. A Twelve. That's not unreasonable. Uh, give me one second. And then I don't have any modifiers to that. Because I'm just a poor little goblin who got no modifiers. Uh, you are within twenty feet, though, correct? I am indeed. All right, then you did hit. Um, so you you chuck it as hard as you can. Um. Da, da, da. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, what does a flask of oil do? I don't actually know. It's gonna do your your hit dice of damage. Is what it's gonna do. You're, Ugh. you're a gobble. Oh. Okay. Well, I'll do some. Uh... I'll do some damage then. You want me to roll a d6? I'll roll a d6. I'll do five. Yes. Five. Okay. Uh, one moment. I need to look up a quick thing with the weapons thing. Armor weapons list. Looking. What the hell happened to my drawing tool, man? Splash. Uh, that was the damage is afflicted over two rounds as the liquid drips off. That is pretty dope. Okay. Um. Okay. So yes, you uh smash that oil uh, into them. They go up. They just and they now they're just like they're not huddled in the corner. They're like now they're just like running around. They're on fire. As the oil is dripping off, I assume you just kind of watch this happen. Yeah. Yes. Okay. And if they ready my shield out, and my axe. Yeah. Yeah. If they start trying to crawl out, I don't know. Try chop at their hands, uh, dissuade them from this course of action. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If if I stay up front, apparently they they won't harm. Like they won't harm me. It doesn't say that they can't. 
approach me, but they they won't harm or make contact. It basically, you know, turning just is the classic. Like they they stay the fuck away from you, right? Uh, um, uh, turning will end like if you back undead into like a corner, right, and, and force them to uh, fight for their survival, then it sort of snaps them out of it. But right. um, so if we were to charge them in that room, then they're out of it. Right? That's right. Yeah. But right now they're just like they're tearing around the small dimensions of this thing, banging into the sarcophagi, flailing around as the fire eats eats away at them. So I need you to roll me um, damage again, Ted. Again. Okay. Okay, another D6. I only rolled a two this time, I'm afraid. Two, okay. And I'm going to beckon Mort for his crossbow. Okay, so uh, the flame uh, drips off of them, and now, like, they're smoking, and they're screaming um, in anger and frustration and pain. Um, uh, uh, I'm going to... Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. So yeah, they uh they they once again kind of huddle, uh, smoking, uh, and crisping in the back of the room. Delicious. I have an extra oil flask if you want to do it again. I mean, I'm not gonna throw it because that's not my thing, but uh, I'll, I'll take it. I'll throw it. Okay. Here you go. I yeah. Mark still it. lit. If there's still flame burning on the floor, we just chuck more oil and it'll keep going. I'm gonna. Hmm. I'm going to have to make a morale check because I'm going to see, like, if the fire, like, breaks their turn. You okay. know what I mean? Like, the, what breaks huh? the turn. You know what I mean? You want to do that before I throw the other flash shot? Yeah, that's fine. Give me one second. Uh, and what does it mean? like, yeah, low. If they make it or under, that means that they are going to stay, right? Because the higher the morale, the better. Yeah. So, um... Yeah, I'm going to say that the turn, like the 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 violence done upon them, actually snaps them out of the turn. So now they're they're fucking pissed again. Um, okay. So Can you turn them again, Matt. So yeah, now now we're back into because they're going to attempt to like come and get you again. So um, okay. uh, what did we okay. what did we say for turn undead? Was it once per encounter or something like that? Well, I thought it was unlimited. I mean, it, it's kind of it. I can. It's kind of up to you as referee how you do it. It, it doesn't say in the um. Uh, the standard rules. I kind of like the optional rule. To it. The optional rule. Um, I'm going to call it this for now, um, and maybe we'll debate it further offline. But um, the oh, optional fine. rule that they have in the advanced is that um, it's basically like once per encounter. Like you can try it once. Uh, yeah, I mean that's that's pretty reasonable. Yeah. Um, but I think it should that, be like okay. maybe like once per encounter per type of undead. Basically, we right? could, we could talk about it later. But yeah, yeah, it right. feels like if you're in an encounter and you fail. You should be able to do it again, you know. Mm. Anyways, oh, uh, you were successful. Yeah, anyway. Sorry, good. So uh, they are. There's no one in melee. So let's roll for initiative. I got five. I got it, guys. Okay. I got a one. You're lo you're welcome. Ah, fuck. Okay, what do you guys plan to do in general? Um, well, I guess I I have my shield and my hand axe out before because we were gonna chuck oil on them. But now it seems like now they're they're breaking the thing, so I'm just gonna hit one. As well, soon as wait, it comes into melee. There's still flame in there. Yeah, but I'm not going to do it because I'm I was standing in front with my shield and my hand axe. So you can throw the oil on them again. Um you know? Right. When they okay. were cowering in the back corner, then that's why I was like, Oh, I'll throw another flask of oil on them. But if they are not cowering in the back of the room because we retroactively decided that they had broken their turn. Right. I, I get it. I get it. Okay. What I'm saying is, like, they have to take time and effort to climb out. Yeah, Whilst that's... climbing out... But they, still... they, they want initiative. So you have to project they're coming what, you, out, what you plan dude. to do. So they're going to come out. I'm not going to tell you what they're going to do. I want initiative. So you need to tell me what you're going to do. Yeah. I shall form a wall between the ghouls and my friends. Okay. Dude, don't let them hit you, man. Speaking um, of Mauricio, what are you going to do? Yeah, I'm. I'm gonna know. drop back and try and get another, uh, another that oil flask that that Goran doesn't want anymore. I'm gonna light it. Okay. I uh, I'm also gonna step back because we have kind of a choke point where they have to come out. So I'm going to um, step back so that I can whack it with my um, with my torch when he comes out. 
Okay, cool. So they More basically like launch the, they launch themselves um, out of that niche and attempt to like basically uh, crawl the way out uh, at the same time. Now they doing that will basically be their action. So right. on the bottom of the round, um, they are basically like they're very very fast. They want initiative, so like they're slithering out. They're going to come out. You're not going to be able to beat them back into the niche, um, but they're coming yeah. out. Um, but your your guys' attacks can go off now. All right, with their normal ACs. Uh, I'll attack. A nine. Nine's not going to do it. Okay. I will uh, swing my magic torch. Swing your magic torch, eh? Oh, that's a 15. 15 is a hit. Club a dub. I believe I am a d6, so I will. Please keep in mind the traits that your weapons have as well. Um, You know, sort of thing. It's the whole point. 15 is a hit. Um, uh, uh, so, six. Uh, I roll a six on the D6. Six you? damage. Okay. So um, as one, <laughs> so basically one is going to uh, basically drop underneath Goran's swing while the other one, um, you connect immediately Avaricios and basically smash its skull into the top of the, like as it's dropping it like into the top of the niche and just <laughs> goes all over the place. And it's the rest of its body just smashes to the ground dead. <laughs> Um, so at your we, feet. So there's only one more left. All right, um, Mort is going to pull up his crossbow and take a take a pop at it. Uh, okay. Mort rolls a fifteen. Nice, nice job, Mort. Pretty sweet. And so a crossbow has the trait of deadly, which means I roll damage at advantage. Correct. There you go. Uh, and the uh, wait. Uh, uh, yeah. Okay. His crossbow is also slow, though, right? Yeah, which means he can fire it, and then he can't fire it again for like two rounds or something, right? No, it just uh, means like he always attacks last at the uh, at the end of the round. But this is the end of the round, so that's fine. Just want you to be aware of that. Oh, yeah. should I throw my oil first then to make him last? Well, you're lighting the oil, right? Like you didn't have that oil ready to go. Didn't it was no? We were expecting to light it off of burning ghouls. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So you you have the lit oil. So now at the end of the round. Because of slow, more, more, more does his damage. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, he is a also a goblin. So he has a D six damage. So we roll a three and a six. I'll take the six, John. <laughs> All right. Cool. All right. So in quick succession, as they pile out of there, Gorn swings wide, but Avaricio smashes the skull, and Squeegee just pegs one right in the chest, um, impaling it against well, no, the Mort, Mort. Mort pegs it. Well, I'm sorry, Mort. Yeah, I get the two of you confused because you're. Both so super badasses. So, um, well, Mort, Mort is the good one. Yeah. No, no, no. Uh, no. <laughs> now, Mort, with this action, as he destroys the last ghoul, uh, a nimbus forms around him as he has. He has no longer just a torchbearer. He is now an adventurer. <laughs> That's right. Uh, right. Nice job. Is there a whole comic strip about this exact thing that happens? <laughs> Nicely so. job yeah. done, Mort. Mort is now officially a goblin level one. All right. right. Oh, maybe. Okay. Um, and uh, and it doesn't appear to be anything else. Uh, Squeegee, you got a good look in there. Doesn't appear to be any other enemies. Um, the you know the stench is very powerful, still kind of wafting up off of them. Uh, the the flame has died down inside. Of course, it was mostly on them, anyways, which dripped off. Right, well, I say we go in and take a look. Uh, bodies on top of the rat pile and let the rats take care of it. Nasty. Okay. All right. So you heat the bodies. They on. don't have any. They don't have anything on them, right? Uh, no, they don't. They don't. Rats. Right on. Yeah. Yeah, let's get in there. Let's, let's search that thing. All right, so it's kind of an Maybe. awkward thing. You kind of have to, like, it's kind of weird and icky. You know what I mean? You kind of have to, like, crawl up into this niche and sort of, like, bodily, like, crawl your way through. Do you know what I mean? Um, and then you kind of drop down into the secret chamber beyond. Um, and indeed, uh, so there is uh, the two stone sarcophagi. On the walls are six large images, okay? There are... Um, Ibis headed Thoth worshipped by orange robed priests. Hmm. Um, uh, the priests are wearing cylindrical headdresses. Obviously indicates them as being priests. Um, there is another image of humans and baboons that are beating crocodiles with clubs while a serene Ibis watches the scene. <laughs> Meant to show, of I course, like the, the triumph of Thoth overset, right? Um, a baboon crouching in the scribe position. Neil's knees are pulled to its chest with a book open on its knees. The left paw of the baboon is raised in greeting. Um, 
uh, yeah, uh, there's a stream of humans bringing goods to the feet of an orange road pair of Thoth priests over whom looms another enormous ibis. Um, this is obviously like a, the intention being that the devout followers of Thoth should prepare suitable donations to, to its priests. Um, uh, if, John, yes. is there any, um, uh, what's the word, Re resemblance of these, these offering of worship here and, and goods to the statue that we think might be for accepting donations? Is that like the same? It does a, image? yeah. There, there, that general impression that like you, you the, that, that worshippers of Thoth should always like donate to the priesthood and and cult of Thoth. And, um, and where is Thoth's what's... arm position in that picture? Uh, that does not indicate. So, okay. Doesn't, doesn't what indicate. are the what are the humans uh, carrying? Can we see? Like, is it like? Uh, just see or... no. I just like goods. Like they're carrying. Does it bananas? Do, yeah, there's like a fruit. Um, some are carrying scrolls. Uh, things like that. Um, okay. Uh, there's another one of Ibis Head Thoth walking beside a woman bearing a white feather in her hand, and to either side are sarcophagi. Okay. Um, you, know that, you know that Thoth was associated with Ma'at, um, whose yeah. image was the white feather. Um, and then the last one is Ibis Headed Thoth holding the reins of a chariot in his outstretched left hand. At Thoth's side is a rayed orb. Um, the tra chariot travels through the sky above adoring orange clad priests. Um, uh, Evaricios, you know that the cult of Thoth uh, associated him with the bringing the light of knowledge and saw him as the driver of the solar chariot. Um, so that's what's on the walls. The um, the sarcophagi are the black stone I indicated is uh, is basalt, um, and it is inscribed all around on top, all around on every surface, inscribed with scenes of humans worshiping Thoth and of baboons beating crocodiles with sticks. Yes. Um, they look, it looks heavy as shit, but it is solid basalt. It looks worth a lot, but they are fucking heavy. Um, uh, the, the lids have been busted open and inside, um, there are, let's see, this is just a combination of both sarcophagi, by the way, just sort of like what's inside. Um, there are four large, uh, meaning about four feet high, about 50 pounds each, alabaster urns. Uh, they're worth approximately about 225 gold each. Um, two rings. One is white gold. Uh, no, I'm sorry, both, ring, both rings are made out of white gold. Um, they are inscribed with two strange words that you can uh, you can actually read. One word says Ruritanus, and one says Aethil Gifu. What are they backwards? <laughs> um, there are a bunch of coins. Now these coins are interesting because they are ancient Arkantian and therefore heavier and more valuable than normal coins uh, made of the same substance. There are 16 ancient gold, what are known as solidi, which are gold, uh, ancient gold Arcantian coins. And there are a t uh, 1,135 ancient silver pennies. And then there are 2,316 ancient copper bits. All of those, if I, I'm gonna double check, but I think all of those are worth more than what those numbers are. Um, wow. Yeah. There is a, um, mm -hmm. uh, resting along the side of one of the sarcophagi is a, a beautiful looking spear with a lapis inlay on the haft. Ooh. Um, there are two silver torques, each inscribed with an ibis head and a cornucopia. Um, it looks like they are ETH were ETH each worth 70 gold. However, if they are sold as a pair, they are probably worth substantially more. Um, and the rest of the stuff in there appear to be sacks of food, some small like wooden furniture and elaborate costumes. Um, all have decayed into dust and fragments. Um, so what I said before was actually what the treasure was. Any uh, fragments of orange robes? Uh, no, nothing useful, unfortunately. Not useful. I'm just saying, it's like, can we tell if these guys were priests? Oh, uh, yes, there's, there are definitely fragments of, yeah, identifying them as what... Is it not weird, guys, that the priests turned into ghouls? 
of the week. Uh, that is an interesting point. You also saw, skele like, way back in the day, skeletons actually emerged from the northwestern part of the De Bouchemont room. Don't forget. Right. Just feels weird, right? Like, these whole guys are, like, sitting here in the river beating crocodiles with sticks. Yeah. And they come back as ghouls. I don't like it. Okay, so that, whatever, like happened to, whatever happened, you know, the big event that, like, leveled everything, maybe it created ghouls and shit. Yeah, maybe. Could be. Um, all right, so how cumbersome are these alabaster, alabaster urns? So they're, what I say, four feet high? Like 50 and pounds each? 50 pounds, yeah. so I would say that that's pretty fucking cumbersome, especially because they're also very, very fragile, right? Um, so I would say each one of those is probably like two slots. Um, and there's how many? Eight? There's four large alabaster urns. And they're four feet. They're four feet high, so they they won't even fit in a pack. I'm I'm going to rule that you would have to you would actually have to carry them. There you you, you could put them in a large sack, I would say, but then the large sack rule says that you actually have to carry a large sack with two hands. All right, yeah. uh, Gorin, bend over because these are going to be tough to hide, man. Yes, yeah, they definitely can't in fit in the urns. Uh, so there is the urn sealed. Uh, are they're they not sealed, they're right? not sealed. There is nothing in the urns. So we could fill the urns up with coins, for example. You could now the coins, um, however, are also uh, larger and heavier, right? So the the gold solidi, they're thick. They're like a quarter inch thick, and they're about one inch in diameter. Um, now here's the good news: is is that each one of those gold solidi are actually worth ten modern gold. Ooh. Mm -hmm. um, however, right. they are much heavier than or ordinary gold. So um, whatever so the one hundred and sixty gold. It, what, it, what, what, what did I say, 160? Well, if they're so, 10 each, it'd be like carrying 160 gold, regular gold pieces, right? In terms 16 of 16 of them, yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah well, the, I was telling you the value, right? They're, they're, they're 10 times more valuable, but you are actually right. correct, Ted, is that they are actually 10 times heavier as well. Yeah. Um, uh, so the obverse features a bust of the emperor wearing an olive wreath surrounded by the letters of his name. The reverse has an image of the emperor in a chariot pulled by four horses. Uh, the silver pennies um, are about the size of a dime. Um, they are a little bit thicker and heavier than a dime. Uh, they are equivalent in value to a modern gold piece. So. Holy shit. Yeah. Um, so once again, 10 times more valuable. Um the obverse most feature a bust of the emperor wearing a military helmet surrounded by the letters of his name. The reverse contains a gladius with the words "Concorendum est." It shall be conquered. Well, all right. Before we go too far down the road of like trying to carry this shit out, Ted, yeah. what's the total value of the stuff that we have so we can calculate the ten percent that we need to get to the fucking halflings? Well, I haven't even gotten to the copper yet. Yeah, first oh, yeah, of all, do the copper. Value. second of all, it's getting late and I got to work tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. And, and third of all, I think we should work out the, frankly, the math of this off camera. Yeah, no one wants to. But just assessing how much value you have. Um, when yeah, you get we got there. some good shit here. Yeah. No so question. The copper bits are also, um, they are each, each one of the bits, um, they're about the size and weight of a nickel. They're worth about the same as a modern silver piece. So once again, 10 times more than the actual listed value. Um. Uh, the economy is really tanked around here, clearly. Ancient bits was... um, ancient bits of copper have a pine tree on the obverse and the legend Credo, I believe, on the reverse. Nice. What was the, what was the number of the copper bits, John? I don't remember. 2316. Wow. So about 230 gold worth. Yeah, so oh. you got four urns, each, each with yeah. two slots, uh, a pair of rings made out of white gold inscribed with two separate words. But look of a Call pair. Me Thomas Covenant, man. A whole shitload yeah, of ancient heavy coins. Um uh so only Here. the only the solidi, only the gold weighs more than the other ones. Got it? All right. Okay. Um every all the other ones you can calculate as normal, but the values are all ten times as much. Got it? Um uh, a spear with lapis inlay, uh, and two silver torques, uh each inscribed with an ibis head and a cornucopia. That's your treasure. That's a lot of shit. Yeah. Uh, hey, Matt, right. anything you want to just randomly wear and see if it's cursed? <laughs> <laughs> Why not, man? You're our guy for that. Let's just have both hands. Just... 
All right. Cool. Uh, okay. Good, good, right, good well, looties. You're gonna, uh, this, this will be an interesting encumbrance puzzle to see how you, what, yeah. you, what you do with well, this Well, also, like, how much we decide to take out, necessarily. That's what I mean. We're only charged the tax on the stuff we bring out. Yeah. Yeah, right? so, you, so you, you, have the, you have the tax if you decide to go out that direction. And um, remember that you only get XP if you return the trader to a safe haven. That's right. what I was going to say, Matt. We're taking every goddamn coin, every bit, every... <laughs> everything sure. yeah. but we don't have but to think, think, it all think about it if we can find another way out that these get, that the assholes don't know about xp in the hand is worth two in the maybe. bush buddy that's <laughs> true i want that xp yeah we got to get those levels up so right. but, can roll another one for hit points that's right but i'm thinking like maybe like the alabaster urns could wait they are for the encumbrance the least valuable thing in this whole thing right yeah. Um, however, like your idea of filling them with with gold or filling them with coins is great because that the thing is, is heavy. right now, Matt, what's your your encumbrance is your movement is sixty. Yeah, I only got a couple more. I have four slots that I can fill before I hit sixty, yeah. and if we just or drop here. rations, like if we just drop our rations here, you know, yeah, we yeah. could stash stuff in the dungeon too. Yeah. Yeah, you're gonna have to figure it out. But just remember if you can't get it back to the the inn or Gosterwick, um, then uh you can't get XP for it. And uh your other option, which you should always kind of keep in the back of your mind, is maybe if you explore further, you can actually establish a haven here. Right? That that is right. A, po a possibility, maybe, right? Depending on how you how you work. I love work. the idea of doing that. I just uh yeah, we just have to Yeah. Money comes power. Money gets hirelings. Hirelings guard corridors. Correct. And we could have our own, like, little setup right across the way from the halflings. You, when you look at this map, dude, like, we have this, this, there's a very defensible area in this big, like, you know, big square corridor thing that we have. You know, we just got to clean out the rats and the rest of the undead. So. Yeah. We'll see anyway, what you, we'll you plan. I wonder if there's another, if you look at the corridor that we're in, it's a, you know, sort of a, a big zero, right? Mm -hmm. another section that could very easily hold another room like this we should yeah. probably scoop around yeah. um and that that door in the south we haven't tried yet either yeah yep. all right all right it's good stuff awesome. excellent exploration job uh guys and you handled those ghouls tidily which was pretty sweet to say um I'm actually both, both with this with that weird creature in the basin and with the ghouls you guys played it really smart which is why you're all sitting pretty with a Gosh. pile of money which is great good problem to have oh baby all right all right, guys, so we will find out what they do next time with all this treasure. I'm definitely looking forward to seeing what they come up with. Um, so uh, hopefully we'll see you guys again soon. If we do not, everyone have a wonderful holiday season, and uh, we will see you on the flip side, everyone. Oh, and of course, can't forget, you've been watching 3D6 down the line, so please don't forget to like and subscribe, as always. And uh, we'll see you next time. Have a great week, everybody. Bye now. Bye-bye. Happy Bye -bye. New Year. Bye -bye.